different and welcome to today's super chill Reiki session. This is going to be a really slow, really calm and soothing session, very nurturing and comforting, just to really help you prep your mind, your body, your spirit for bed. So we're just kind of powering down and giving over to this deep, restorative sleep. So this is based on one of your requests. One of you said, like, I would love it if we could have just another kind of really chill, calm, soothing sleep session. So I love hearing your requests. Thank you so much for leaving them. I just love being able to connect with you and it helps me feel like I know who to direct, you know, I, I know what you want, I know when I'm, like when I'm making the video for, I guess, so thank you. So this is for you. So, I want you to just take some time to settle in. So whether that means for you maybe taking a few slow deep breaths, maybe you need to begin to unwind, whether that you need to do a little bit of a brain dump, writing down some things that have come up for you, writing down some things that are kind of playing at your mind, and you want to just start to release the day and prep for the evening. Slow deep breaths, melting into the present moment, sinking into the here and now. Let's use a little bit of spray. I'm gonna spray your aura and I'm gonna spray my palms and then we're gonna do a little bit of an aura scan just to see what you're bringing in, what kind of energy you're bringing in. Do me a favor and just to slow down your breathing. When we slow down our breathing, it kind of triggers this response in our minds to start slowing down our thoughts. So slow down your breathing. It's kind of a way of tricking ourselves into understanding that it's time for a shift. It's time for more restful activity. This is a frankincense and myrrh.
going to come through with our selenite, a couple of selenite wands and do a little bit of cleansing. So what I did notice is maybe a little bit of overactivation in the solar plexus. So we're going to be focusing on just releasing that, but I'm going to just move through kind of vacuuming your aura and just helping you to start that process of release. So is there anything from the day or the night that you can release? So much of our healing is about releasing. And at this stage in the process of prepping for sleep, we're really focusing on release. Releasing what doesn't serve you. Releasing anything in the mental plane. Releasing anything you're holding too tightly to. You can just release. We've talked about the benefits of letting go, the benefits of doing deep energetic clearing. I have so many videos about that. But you know, when we can release even our identification outside of self, releasing this identification, releasing this, this strong attachment to who we think we should be or who we not even who we think, you know, but maybe societal pressures, maybe who our ego wants us to be. And when we can start to shift that and begin to just release and be open to what is, what is here, what's the me underneath it all? And just loving and honoring yourself, just as you are. Obviously this process is a longer one than just, you know, moving through with some cleansing crystals and inviting that release, but sometimes what we need is just a reminder that there's another way. So that's, that's what I'm doing here. I'm just reminding you that if you're holding on to a lot, it's possible to release, it's possible to let go. Even a new outlook, a new perspective. 
know if there's something specific that you want to call in. Maybe you're, you're dealing with something at work. Maybe you've got some kind of family thing you're moving through. Maybe there's this uh, goal that you're reaching for. You can also, you know, clarify our intention that we've set here and specify it based on what you're moving through. Maybe you need extra support. Maybe you need a boost of confidence. Maybe you, you would like some, some nurturing for grief. Maybe you would like some, just some help mentally supporting maybe a decision that you're trying to make or maybe you're just really going through it in terms of different self-discoveries and you just want a little bit of a boost whatever it is I'm sending you so much love and you know this is your session so this is the time when you can cater it to what you need Good. I'm going to light this incense here Lighting it off of our candle, you know, preserving that intention. So now we're going to begin clearing anything that doesn't serve that intention, right? Cleansing, clearing and cleansing. What's not serving that intention? Is there anything in the mental plane that right off the bat you're like, oh yeah, I've been listening to these ne this negative self-talk that doesn't really serve my intention of the general intention of wanting to get a really good restful night's sleep. But also that deeper intention, that more specific clarified intention that you said. Or just for your empowerment. Maybe you're believing certain thoughts. This is just a reminder that we don't have to believe everything we think. as fact. Not that eight-year-olds aren't wise, there's great wisdom in youth, and but recognizing that we have to have agency over what we choose to believe, what we choose to fill our minds with. That is part of our mental health, is choosing, you know, having agency over our thoughts, choosing the thoughts that serve us. I personally do believe that we choose our thoughts. It's a practice for sure, but that's what meditation is for. It's part of the practice of choosing what to fill your mind with. And if you're filling your mind with gunk, if you're filling your mind with junk, if you're filling your mind with negative self-talk or disempowering beliefs or... Uh, you know, kind of casting your mind into the future with these anxious thoughts, worry, things like that. We just want to be aware that that's what we're doing and that we don't have to believe these things. Just because they pop into our mind doesn't mean that we have to believe them. So, I'm going to draw the symbols right outside of your heart space.
Now we are going to begin just letting the Reiki precepts wash over you. So, just for today, I will not anger. You can repeat them after me or just let them wash over you. These are the five principles or precepts of Reiki. Just for today, I will not anger. And I've mentioned this before, but, and I've done a whole video about my interpretation of the precepts, but for this one, it's not about controlling the emotion because I think emotions are just intel. It's just our, it's just our our kind of interpretation of what's going on in the world. So, oh, this happened, this is how I responded to it, my body reacted to it, my emotions reacted to it. Now I'm going to choose how I respond, how I take this information in, and I'm going to choose how I, how I respond here. So that anger that comes in as intel, as the emotion, that's just, that, that's helpful. That's, infor that's informative. For the precepts, what this is really talking about from my perspective is I'm going to choose how I respond to that intel. So, just for today I will not anger for me translates to just for today I will not act from a place of anger. I won't speak from a place of anger. But that anger can tell you, oh, a boundary was crossed. Then you can choose what to do. I'm going to reset that boundary. I'm going to reaffirm it. I'm going to choose to do something different. I'm going, you know, you can do any number of things. So they always have more choices than you, than you uh, think you do. But that's it. Just for today, I'm not going to act from a place of anger. Just for today, I will not anger. Just for today, I will not worry. And similarly, this is just for today, I will not act from a place of fear. I will not act from a place of fear. So if I get those anxious thoughts, like you talked about, or I start feeling really afraid, or, you know, projecting myself into the future and start feeling like, Ooh, this isn't gonna go right, I'm not good enough, this is the scenario could happen, this what if, what if. You can shift it and start to say, oh, okay, the intel is that this thing is scary. So that's what I'm receiving is that I'm afraid of this thing. So then we can choose how to interpret that. Ah, this just means I'm doing something new. That means I can be really proud of myself for putting myself out there. How courageous is it of me to do something new? Our ego wants to tell us that when we do new things, it's scary. It's something to be afraid of. So what we can just say is, ah, this is my ego trying to protect me. And I can choose, ah, oh, no, I don't want to stay small. I'd rather step into my, my full sense of self and empowerment, my full alignment. I'd rather resonate authentically. So, thank you for that intel, but just for today, I'm not going to act from a place of fear. So just for today, I will not worry. Just for today, I'm not going to act from a place of fear. Just for today, I will be honest. I will live and work honestly. I will have integrity. Like we spoke about, you know, that choice of how we act, that choice of what we do. A choice of how we think. We can say, just for today, I will vow to do my work with honesty, with integrity. I vow to treat others with respect. I vow to be honest and integrated, integrating my words and my actions. And we can say, just for today, I will be honest. I will be honest. That one's pretty self-explanatory. Just for today, I will be grateful. I will be grateful. I will be grateful. 
life has so many gifts and blessings. We have to look for them sometimes. Sometimes our mind wants to convince us that life is all struggle and hard, but it's so important to have a gratitude practice. It's very important and impactful. We often look at it as just like a little bit of a buzzword, but it's just, I mean, it transcends cultures, it transcends time, how valuable and important and impactful gratitude is. I am so thankful for all of my many blessings. You know, this isn't a new trendy thing, this has happened ad infinitum for us human beings. Being grateful, being grateful. I am so grateful and the connection between gratitude and living a happier, healthier life. I am so grateful, I'm so grateful that I get to do this, that I get to connect with you. I'm so grateful that I have a garden that I love, that I'm able to go out and harvest my food and make it. But even before that, I was grateful that I was able to eat every day, go to bed in a comfortable bed at night, that I had fresh air to breathe, clean water to drink, that I had hot water. And I first moved here, the first winter that I was here. Um, our boiler kicked out and we didn't have, and it was during COVID, so there was a lot of like uh, delays in terms of getting a new boiler here. So they kept pushing it. And so we were here with no heat and no hot water. And it was like negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. And so it was we had to wear coats inside and we just, we thought it would happen in the next few days so we didn't want to get a hotel and a lot of the places in the area were booked. It was just one of those things that kept, and I just remember feeling so overwhelmed and now when I think about that time, the overwhelming feeling that I have is, oh, I'm so grateful that I can just have a hot shower a warm shower, take a bath. So we would boil water to fill up the bathtub. My my partner did this on, on Valentine's Day. He like filled up the tub with all kinds of flowers and things like that. But we had to there was no running water at that point, so he had to go and like get snow from outside and melt it and then fill the bathtub with it. So grab the snow in a big huge bu- you know like bucket melt it, bring it inside, fill the bathtub, then he put flowers and oils, and it was such a, it was just so nice, it was like such a magical thing, but looking back on it, it's like, oh my gosh, I'm so grateful that we can, we have all these conveniences and things like that, and I'm not trying to make it sound super dramatic, it was just one of those things, like learning curve things about moving to a new area that has lots of um, challenges, like it's different, just different, small town. Now I feel incredibly grateful every time I take a shower, every time, you know, in the winter time when I can just turn on the heat and I don't have to worry about wearing a coat inside, I can take my coat off and hang it up. But anyway, very important. gratitude. So important. So important. Just for today, I will be grateful. Just for today, I will be grateful. Just for today, I will be grateful. And lastly, just for today, I will be kind. Kind to myself and to all living beings. Just for today, I will be kind. How can you be kinder to yourself? How can you be kinder to other other human beings in your life and other beings in your life? So for me, how that manifests itself is that I 
Um, I have a practice of compassion. I have a book that I've written called, uh, if, you're, if you're new here, if you're not new here, you've heard me talk about it. And I know a lot of you have read it, and I'm so grateful for that. Um, it's called Self-Loved. And it's a month of meditations, but it's really all about really cultivating a practice of self-love for yourself. And then from there, we really can cultivate a practice of love for others. And I extend that through this practice, through these precepts, to not only humans, but also animals, extending that compassion and kindness to animals. So I, cho- I choose to live a vegan lifestyle, have a vegan diet. But this is just all about kindness. How can you be a little kinder in your life? What does that mean for you? I'm going to come in this van. We're just going to walk. Wafting this energy through. to hold a stone in your palms for me. This is a blue calcite. Feels like a hard candy. Very tactile. I want you to hold this in your palms like that. And if you can hold it over your solar plexus for me, that would be great. There we go. So just in your palms. now we're just inviting this energy in circling around, circling around, circling around. I'm going to place this piece of black kyanite, what is fuzzies from the blanket? Place this piece of black kyanite down by your draining out any of that negative energy, any of those blockages can just kind of float down and out. Now I want to open up using this pineapple quartz, just opening up the crown, allowing this beautiful flow to happen, divine energy flowing in, but also allowing you to ascend, really taking the cap off, uncorking. I'm going to place my hands over your hands on this calcite, sending this healing energy in through your palms, helping it flow all through your body, but on top of that, also helping this calming energy, this soothing energy flow into your solar plexus.
you are divine, you are connected, you are expressive, you are loved, you are strong, you are creative and emotionally balanced, you are safe, you are so safe. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day or your night. I love you. I'm so grateful to you. It's just such an honor for me to be able to connect with you. So thank you. Let me take this crystal so that you can relax your hands here. All right. I upload every Wednesday and Sunday at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. That's a little bit different this year than last year, but sending you lots and lots of love. And I'll see you again very soon. Until then, be so well. And let me know. Come back and comment on this video tomorrow, tomorrow morning. And let me know if you got a good night's sleep. Okay. I can leave another sleep video up here if you'd like. Lots of love. Namaste. Thank you.